All right, all right, all right, all right. How's everybody feeling? A lot of lanyards out there, a lot of lanyards. We are definitely at a conference. We are definitely at a conference. You guys look good. You know, um, I'm proud to be here today to give a presentation. A lot of presentations, um, a lot of active presentations. But I'm not the most intellectual guy that's going to speak all day or in the audience. What I've been brought here to do is tell a little bit of the story that I'm involved in and the posse that I represent. But most importantly, I'm here to help build a little bit of fun and build a vibe and get you guys moving. You just had fucking lunch. You got to get some energy, right? Let's go. So I'd like you to do, when I say go, the key word will be go. You're simply all that can hear me going to stand to your feet. Now, don't do it yet. The key word is go, and then you'll stand to your feet. Do it as quick as you can on my call. Ready? You can make some noise. Ready? Yeah. Let's try that again. Y'all ready? Yeah. Go. Okay, that was pretty sharp. That was pretty sharp. Not, no round of applause for that. Sit back down real quick. We're going to nail it together. It's about speed and accuracy here, guys. And I'm not one of those speakers that's just doing this so that then you listen to the crap I'm going to say. This is actually part of it, so we need to work together. When I say go, stand as quickly as you can to your feet. Ready? Go. Beautiful. Perfect. Awesome. Now, I'm going to teach you guys a little something today. No, no, stay up, stay up, stay up, <laughs> stay up. Before we start talking about the group that I helped co-found, uh, co-find, what is that? Does anyone know? Co-found, co-start, <laughs> profound, it's profound. Uh, I want to teach the group what we call the slow clap. Now, we're not taking credit for this at November Project. Those of you who've been to a sporting event have probably taken part in a slow clap before, but simply, if you've never done it before, you're going to use both hands and you're going to follow my speed. Basically, we're going to clap, and then we're going to clap a little bit quicker, and then eventually it's going to become this mushed up ball of energy. It's going to be amazing. You all good? You ready to go? So just follow me. Stay, follow my tempo. Ready? Here we go. No, no, it's a slow clap. Come on. But real loud like you believe in it. Come on. Louder. Yeah, that's nice. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Yeah, all right, all right. Stay up, stay up, stay up. Good. Now stop, stop. Now don't sit down yet because we almost got it right there. We posted an A minus on that one. We're going to do this one more time and then I'll let you guys sit down. The key to a so slow clap executed A plus style, you started slow. Real good. You built speed. Nice, right? But when you get to that mushed up, real excited part, I want you to all start screaming. Even if you're like really cool and you're in marketing or you work for a digital app or something, when it gets all mushed up and it gets real good, I want you to start screaming. So I can just go crazy. Ready? Slow clap. We're at hyper growth right now. It's going to be so fucking good. Once in a lifetime chance. Stay with me. That's nice. On the balcony, too. We need you. Let's go. Ready? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Stop. Sit down. You guys are amazing. Thank you. That's a slow clap. You can borrow that at your next company outing. Thank you for having me. I'm gonna, that's the shortest presentation of the day. Thank you. <laughs> a proud alum from Northeastern University down on Huntington Avenue. Shout out, shout out. I was brought from Madison, Wisconsin, my hometown, to live here in Boston uh, by the men's rowing team. I was on an athletic scholarship, brought to Boston, rowed, raced, and trained for the Northeastern University Huskies on the Charles River. Pretty cool. Awesome. And. Um, through that process, I met people from around the world. My teammates were from all over. Israel, South Africa, Eastern Europe, awesome. One of these dudes I met, especially close friend of mine, his name is Boyan Mandrick. He and I were friends living and training and racing on campus back in the day. But half a decade later, we found ourselves graduated out in the real world. We're closer to 30 years old at this point. We found ourselves standing in a bar in the basement at the poorhouse on Boylston. Anybody been to the poorhouse? If you've never been to the poorhouse, they serve extremely tall beers, not too expensive. It's a great scene if you're from Wisconsin, all right? <laughs> so we're at the poorhouse and we're standing there. We say, you know what? It's October 2011. What should we do? Like, how are we going to stay fit? What are we going to do to keep moving this winter? Winter's always tough here in New England, right? So we decided that night we were going to basically live out a bet. And for the entire next month, every morning, rain or shine, we'd wake up, meet in the city, and work out. No club dues, no titles of 
spin or run club or which kind of yoga studio. It wasn't that specific. We were just going to work out by running up and down some hills, do some burpees, basic shit, right? Well, because we're such rower dudes, we had to call it something, give it a name. Also, start a Google Doc to keep all the information. So we called it November Project. We, we took into this one month as if maybe at the end of the month we would be fitter or we'd just be done and just kind of move on to whatever else. But we decided on that very first day, November 1st, 2011, it was November, okay, so that's not November. That's November. <laughs> November 1st, 2011, we launched ourselves into what ended up becoming a pattern in our life. We saw each other every day, it was fucking awesome. And those of you guys who do work out or lo love to run or train, you recognize the hardest part, sometimes, most times, can be getting out of bed. With consistency, you can fucking take over the world. But consistency is the hard part, right? So by the time we looked up, it was December, January, February, and it had become a pattern, and we had become morning people, right? Started painting shirts and telling the story about what we were doing as November Project. We were so proud of ourselves, even though it was just the two of us, right? We, we put it on social media and invited the world to join us. I think our Twitter followers were like somewhere hovering around six or seven for a few months. And in the spring of 2012, people did start showing up. I actually coached the team in Northeastern for four years. He coached at Syracuse, so we had a pretty good balance of how to host a space. All right, bring it in, quiet down. Here's what we're gonna do, right? We could coach, we could speak to athletes, we could fire people up. November Project in that first year went from just the two of us to workouts at the Harvard Stadium and all over the city that were ranging two, three, sometimes 400 people. No dues, no nonsense. We called the workouts shit your grandfather would respect because it's not, about, it's not about the specific shorts that you're wearing. It's not about the tech in your shoes. It's about can you get out of bed and bust your ass. We thought that was the most important part. But the reason I'm here today is not because a couple guys did this thing in Boston. It's because this did truly turn into a movement. David spoke about a movement first thing this morning. He talked about how you guys are the founders of what is the first year at Hypergrowth. Boston was the first tribe in what, over the last half decade, has become a worldwide movement. Pretty crazy. Now, November Project, on a Wednesday morning, the sun rises in 43 cities around the world. Somewhere around 10,000 people come out in eight different countries. Now, I made the, uh, the flag of Malaysia there bigger because they're one of the newest tribes. It was pretty cool. They came on the same day as Buffalo. Buffalo, for you guys who don't know, is between America and the United States. It's not as exotic, but it's still worth mentioning. Um, but when you, when you drop into a November Project experience in any of these countries, in any of these cities, there's a very clear leader and there's a very clear culture. I'm going to get to the very specific culture of Boston, but I want to talk about why this works. There's two main features. In fact, they might be the most important pieces of November Project, because this story is no longer about me. This story is about a success of people coming together and wanting to be together. It's pretty cool, right? This thing's a runaway train. It's like Fight Club, except just fucking people working out. It's great. So I want to talk about the two things. The two things in my, in my take, because I have a pretty good vantage point of all these cities, these tribes, is authentic leadership, number one, and connection, right? And I think these two pieces, I'm going to go through them in the next few minutes here, are applicable to everyone in this room. Whether you're a foot soldier for your company or you're a founder, CEO, investor, it doesn't matter. Authentic leadership. I'm gonna highlight these qualities with three examples. My first example is a co-leader up in Edmonton. Edmonton, Alberta. Show of hands. Anyone ever been to Edmonton, Alberta? No? Oh, shit. Edmonton, Alberta in the back row. Edmonton is um, it's cold, it's dark, um, and it is not to be messed with. People from Edmonton do not like you to talk down about Edmonton. It's like Detroit, it's like Philly, it's like Boston. <laughs> Nadim has a ton of leadership qualities that I think are extremely important, but if I had to boil it down to one main quality, and the reason that people follow him is that he stands proud with Edmonton on his sleeve or his chest or whatever the metaphor is. And he wants to build up not only himself as an identity of someone who loves his city, but so does the tribe that he leads at these workouts. And so does the city. November Project Edmonton is actually good for the city of Edmonton. It brings people together. And just so, for those of you who haven't been there, it's negative 30 degrees in the winter there. They never miss. They never, ever miss. His main leadership quality, in my opinion, 
is that pride, pride in your city. You guys can laugh at that if you want. Uh, that's Mary Arnold. Mary Arnold is one of the three co-leaders in New York City. She lives in Harlem. Um, she has this beautiful tuft of fluffy red curls, and um, she's an ultra marathon runner. For those of you guys who don't know ultra marathon, ultra marathoning is anything over the 26.2 marathon distance. So 27 and up, cool. She's involved in many different groups, not only in her home community in Harlem, but up and down the Manhattan Island and all other boroughs. Her leadership example I'd like to highlight is leading by example, right? This summer, I think she did nearly a dozen ultras. Most importantly, she ran the, uh, the Vermont 100, which is 100 miles of running. Um, but when she finishes these races, and this is the mind-blowing part, she doesn't need to get on her Instagram to tell you about it. She runs back up the trail and cheers everybody else on as they finish. In my opinion, her number one leadership quality is leading by example. And my final leader I want to highlight today is a local. She's actually in the room right now. This is Emily Saul. She co-leads with two other gentlemen uh, that are named Chris and Chris. Emily is a beautiful person, beautiful personality, and she has tons of leadership qualities. But in my opinion, if I had to boil it down so that you can take away a message of authentic leadership, Emily Saul builds confidence. That's a crazy thing. We all struggle with confidence, right? You get up in the morning, fucking shower, oh God, going to work, love my job, hate my job, whatever. Confidence, we have to put it on every day. Where do we find it from? Is it built in you know, years of our life? Or is it something that we can buy? Or is it a connection we can make? Confidence. When Emily Saul speaks to hundreds of people, what do we have this Wednesday? 500 people at the Harvard Stadium. They listen. But cooler than that, when you speak to Emily Saul, she listens. She builds confidence. She wants to see the weak become strong, the slow become fast, the fast become cooler and more chill. And what she does for her group and this city is build confidence. She's a rare person. And if you see her today, give her a high five, give her a hug. She's fucking awesome. All right? I'm going to talk about connection in a second. And no, you're not done moving. You're going to get up and move again. But authentic leadership is important. Authentic leadership is one of those things that you can't fake. And these three examples are some of my proudest. When you finally do decide to show up to November Project, because you don't have an excuse, you can get there. I know you can. I believe in you. You're going to see a lot of very upbeat people. You're going to see some strong culture. You're going to see some togetherness. Okay? Now, just like that really fucking awesome slow clap at the beginning, I need you to trust me on this next part. You ready? When I say go, we're going to stand up again. We practiced that twice, so I know you're ready to go. Ready? The key word is go. The key word is go. And go. Awesome. That was actually, it's getting better. It is getting better. Now, you guys have 35 seconds. Not only do you have an assignment, but then you also might even have a pop quiz later. The assignment is to turn to someone in your area. You're not allowed to know them. So if you've got to move out of your row, that's fine. 35 seconds, you're going to meet someone new, you're going to memorize what their face looks like, memorize their first name in their hometown. 35 seconds, and when I call it, then I'm going to have you guys sit back down, and I'm going to call on a couple of you guys to remember what you learned. It's a crazy thing, right? We've got these phones that have all the fucking information in the world, we can't even remember people's names. Why? I'm bad at names. No, you're not. You're not fucking trying, all right? <laughs> you're not trying. Because if someone's going to write you a million dollar check, swear to God, you remember their name, all right? 35 seconds, someone new, face, name, hometown. If you want to get funky with some fun facts, that's great. That's bonus points. 35 seconds starts right now. Go. All right, all right, all right. Stay up, stay standing, stay standing, stay standing. Can I get your attention? All right, all right, all right, all right. All right, all right, all right, all right. Oh, yeah, it's nice. They're not getting quiet at all. It's nice. Oh, it's so good. It's a warming community feel. Oh. All right, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. It's kind of nice. I'll take one of those. Take one of those. What up? Stay up, stay up, stay up, stay up, stay up. 
I need, uh, I need your attention, because I'm going to, I need your attention. I'm going to embarrass a couple of you. My man in the orange, who did you have? Introduce your friend here. Jessica. Jessica. She's from Boston. She's from Boston. Um, Anything else? She likes artichoke, favorite color red. Yeah. Round of applause, please. That was pretty good. Um, let's see. Pick on somebody in the back. Um, let's see. Right there, with the, with, next to the pole. Go ahead. Hi. Speak really loud, because my friends on the floor want to hear you. Yeah. Evan? And he's from Atlanta. He's from Atlanta? All right, and Evan, tell us about this person next to you. She does content marketing. A little round of applause for content marketing. Hey. <laughs> We got one more. We got, we got one more. My friend with the arms crossed with a negative body language. No, you right there. You know, I got you with the ponytail. Sarah? Sarah? He's both trying new food. Round of applause for new food. <laughs> now, stay standing. I might actually pull out some more quizzes later, so remember that shit. Um, this is not just a game. It's a part of what we do at November Project. These connections are real. Human contact is a part of it. These workouts are super social. It's early in the morning. Nothing social in the morning. They're super fun. It's early in the morning. Nothing's fun in the morning. You just gotta take my word for it. In fact, I don't even care if you ever come to November Project. We're experiencing it right now. This is a community that's being born in front of your eyes. Do me a favor. Look at your right hand. Put the fingers close together like you're gonna swim the English Channel. Perfect. Now go nice and wide, as wide as you can. Now, when I say go, you're gonna put your hand as far above your head as you can. If you got pit stains, that's fine. I do too, all right? It's hot in here. When I say go, you're going to put your hand up, and you're going to give out three high fives, but you're going to do them November Project style, which is with eye contact. And when the hands touch, that's when you say the optional phrase, fuck yeah. <laughs> now, but I don't know everyone's background. Maybe that's too crass, OK? If that's too harsh a language, no judgment. You can say heck yeah, or you can say nothing, and we'll judge you, OK? <laughs> so we're going to do five. High fives, optional fuck yeah, eye contact, ready go. Here you go. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. Heck yeah. All right. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. Great. 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 Now, now, that went really well. There's two more steps, and then this is officially a good time. The first one's really fucking scary. Definitely the scariest thing you'll do all month. What is it, September? Scariest thing you'll do all month. And the next, and then one that comes right after that is gonna be like real like lovey-dovey and mushy and great. And then I'm done. And then we'll just fucking all go get a cup of coffee. The first one, uh, I need you to take out your smart or flip phone or landline. <laughs> Cordless landline. Probably doesn't get reception too far from the kitchen. Okay. Um, don't get into it and open it and check this stuff, but just hold it up. Hold it up nice and high. I know you have one, so if you're not holding it, you're the liar. But, but straighten the elbow, because that's the form. It really can show it off. Good. I don't know if this is empowering, but it's cool looking. <laughs> we are attached to these things. You can bring it down, but keep it out. Now, when I say go, you're going to give it to somebody next to you. If you're too scared to give it to a stranger, if you're too scared to give it to a stranger, for fucking 40 seconds, shit, calm down. <laughs> if you're too scared to give it to a stranger, give it to one of your girlfriends from the office, okay? <laughs> give it to one of your boys, whatever. But if you want to live on the wild side for 40 seconds, we're not going to have our phones, and I'm going to give mine to a complete stranger. Do it right now. Awesome. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, I know, I know. I feel naked too, it's fine. Can I uh, bring it back, bring it back, bring it back, bring it back. Bring it on back, bring it on back, bring it on back. Bring it on back. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Love the vibe, love the vibe. It's crazy that we're standing here at the end of 2017 and when someone else has your phone, it feels like they have your entire life. You feel naked, you feel a little bit freaked out, like, oh shit, what's on there? Like, oh, what's the cloud do with those photos? Are they over to he, they? One of the pieces of magic about November Project is that you can, through Instagram, Twitter, and all that bullshit, 
you can play November Project, the video game, right? You can basically like follow all the photos, fucking retweet, re retweet the whatever, and you can stay on top of the digital game. But you really can't play NP and be a part of the November Project community without putting your phone down and showing up, participating, and connecting with humans. Following these authentic leaders, becoming one yourself, driving yourself with consistency in this weatherproof stuff, okay? At the end of every November Project workout, whether it happens in Malaysia or in Iceland, my hometown of Madison, Chicago, we end with a group photo. But a common greeting, and I'm gonna give it to you guys today, this will be the lovey-dovey part, and then we'll give our phones back, I swear. <laughs> Human contact is important. The high fives are just a start. I think we're living in a day and age in these cool cities that we're attracted to, and yet we don't speak to the other people on the train, right? It's weird to say what's up to the people at the other table. And I think we can all do better than that. I'm from Wisconsin, it's a friendly place. We're huggers, not shakers. I don't know what to tell you. And I've had enough of a say in the culture of this early on, now I'm just a spokesperson. And I stand in the back row of a lot of workouts. But we're huggers. When I say go, you're turn to give out two big bear hugs. Now, it's fucking crazy, oh, it's so crazy. <laughs> if you don't want to, you feel uncomfortable, you can give another high five, I won't judge you. Personal space, that's a real thing. But if you're willing to try and risk, you don't have your phone, fucking do whatever. <laughs> Big bear hug and tell those two people, I know it's so bizarre, tell those two people, I'm glad you're here. Do it right now. Do it right now, do it right now. There you go. And now, and now you can give your phones back. Trade phones back. Trade phones back. <laughs> give your phones back to your original owner. Stay up though, stay up though, stay standing. Stay standing. Give your phones back, stay standing. Awesome, awesome. Guys, you got only 25 more seconds of me, so 25 more seconds. The vibe in this room is the vibe of November Project. It's people trying, it's adults actually backing up the fact they say, I like to try new things and, and meet new people, but you don't. We just did. Pretty cool. <laughs> I don't care if you ever set your alarm clocks, if you ever come to November Project, it's not about that. And it's not about me. It's about authentic leadership and connection. That's all it's about. If you pull anything away from this dude in a neon jacket, authentic leadership and connection. Sprinkle it around your office, steal it completely, I'll send you this brilliant PowerPoint. <laughs> but we're gonna finish this today, and I'm gonna just mic, mic drop and get the fuck out of here, the way we started. Let's go. Oh! Thank you, thank you.